This is Nicholas. Hey, Nicholas. It's Kelly from, from Justin and Kelly. Hey, Kelly. How you doing? Good. How are you? Um, I'm on my work phone, so okay. I'm going to try to make this into a conference call. If I botch this... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No worries. But I don't think I will. Sure. The conference button just showed up. Hold on a second. I'm here. Nicholas, can you hear us both? Yeah, I got both of you. Yay. I did it. That's fantastic. Technology doesn't <laughs> fail us, for one. Well, I, I mean, I'm glad I got both of you on the phone. Uh, I guess the idea is that I want to give people an idea of like what your show is going to be like and also what your workshop is going to be like, try to help them uh, understand that. Awesome. Justin, you want to yeah. lead? Uh, yeah, so I mean, the workshop that we're doing is called Love the One You're With, and it's basically just uh, showing people uh, uh, what can happen when you make a positive choice at the top of the scene as opposed to a reflexive negative one. Uh-huh. Um, a lot of scene work and improv defaults to conflict, right? It's right. about places you don't want to be and people you don't want to be with. And uh, that's a standard sort of comic-like trope, and it can be really funny, but it can also uh, be sort of cliche and we'll be feeling stuck, as in we've seen it before and the scene isn't going anywhere. What the workshop's going to do is run through some super easy sort of techniques um, to um, sort of get to agreement with your partner right at the top of the scene and uh, um, make your partner someone you actually want to be with in a yeah. scene. And once you realize that you can do that, and it's easy to do that at the top of the scenes, it'll take your uh, scenes and your character work to new, excited, and unexpected directions, at least that's what we found. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the hard, been the hardest thing for me my entire career, is, is trying to, you know, agreement hasn't been an issue, but to stay positive, and to, yeah. you know, endow that person as someone that I... <laughs> <laughs> that I want to be in the scene with. And I guess it's kind of ironic that Jimmy Corain's going to be here because that's a lot of the same stuff that he talks about, you know, staying positive. Yeah, we tend to, um, a lot of people tend to say that word, that's a hard choice to make at first because it feels sort of unnatural, which is yeah. weird that positivity would feel unnatural. Right. Um, <laughs> but, um, or if it's not that, it's just that the scene tends to become about something other than what's going on between the two of you right now. Right. So a lot of our um, teaching focuses on that, too, which is like, how do we keep this between the two people that are here and not worry about um, other people that aren't here or wishing we were somewhere else or uh, unnecessary, like, exposition or yeah. background detail? Or wishing how we were other it? people that we, we are not. Or wishing you know? we were other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's not only, like, finding that total agreement, but also, you know, having mutual discovery. I mean, I think that's fantastic, and it's going to go over really well. And if people don't take it, then they're probably horrible, negative people. No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, I, I'm going to take it because I, I think that I can never stop working on something like that. Can you guys talk a little bit about what you do and what your show is? I saw your show, and I could hardly walk out of the theater after I saw it. Um, yeah. Um, what we do is we go to audience members and we kneecap them with a stick. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, fantastic. Uh, no yeah, it's a very violent show. No, uh, like what we try to do is, um, uh, and it, it sort of like varies from show to show. I think the show that you saw, like we said, maybe four words in like yeah. um, a 25 minute like yeah. show. Yeah. Uh, that's not typical. We talk a lot more in a lot of other shows, but what we try to do is really try to make the most that we can with the least that um, we have to have. I don't know if that makes yes. sense. Um, yeah. Try to make the first choice that we make, whatever it is, like be it ever so small, the way we walk on stage, the way we're carrying our weight as we're standing like on the sidelines, right? The mm-hmm. first thing we do, be like the only choice that matters like in a scene and let the rest of the scene follow uh, from that. So it's really sort of stripping away all of the extraneous stuff that uh, happens in a lot of improv shows when you're out there and you're feeling the pressure to try to be funny or try to come up with something or try to make what you're doing have meaning, right? right. Like what we sort of try to do to say, well, it has meaning, you know, right from the top if you allow yourself to uh, stop and uh, recognize it and uh, make what you do matter. And, uh, yeah, that's basically our philosophy. Yeah, and not trying to rush to define it, too. And making that first choice matter and also just you know, to go along, a lot of our, to go back to the teaching part for a second, a lot mm-hmm. of what we teach emerged from how we play. And a lot of mm-hmm. what we teach informs our own play, too. It's kind of like a cycle. Yeah. Um, which is to say, you know, it's just the two of us up there. So 
Right. We've got to make this work. And then yeah. Justin said, like, let's trust that what we have together is enough to sustain a whole show. Right. This is the scariest thing. And what Colin was saying, I'm not trying to define stuff too early. I think that's so key to what we do. Because we learn, like, in, like, improv classes, like, you know, name this, you know, mm-hmm. name what this is so that you both, like, know uh, what's happening so that you can proceed, like, from there. Basically, what we've been telling ourselves for the past, like, year or so is, like, don't name it. Don't come out with any ideas. Like, don't yeah. come out, like, with, like, a choice for how you want this scene, like, to go. And basically just find it in the other person, you know, and right. like let it feel, let it brew, and it'll be what it uh, what it is. And like eventually, like the details and the definition will come out. But it will come out as a, like a mutual discovery, rather than one player's invention that the other one then feels bound to sort of follow. And right. I think that the, the thing about um, discovering it together, whether it's us like in our shows or um, you know students in a class, like then both people feel they have a stake in that show, you know? Which, yeah. Like, as opposed to when one person makes a choice and you feel like, well, I'm going to go along with it. And that's a great thing to do. I mean, that great humor evolves in there, and you can, like, easily adapt to someone else's choice. That's right. so much of improv, right? Um, but so often you walk away from that being like, I don't know where I fit into that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, we, like... I don't know, just what I was to say. We try to walk away from our shows, like, now feeling like you couldn't say, one one of the other person couldn't say, like, oh, I had a good show. Right. right? Absolutely. Like, it was, yeah, it, it, it used to be, like, and, like, we've, we've been playing together for a long time, and we've only just, over the past year and a half, started to, like, play the way we do right now. But for years, you know, like, you know, we'd, we'd play in order so that people would come up to one or the other of us after a show and say, you had a great show. And then we'd walk away saying, sweet, I was great. You know, uh-huh. we were like, <laughs> you know, kind of like what we're going for right now is that like after the show, people come up to us and they literally couldn't say that you had a great show or you had a show. But instead, it's, that was a great that, show. Uh-huh. And it, like, that's what we're going for, just sort of really sort of take away um, the sort of individual player's ego yeah. that I think defines so much you know, for better or for worse uh, of a lot of the improv we see. And just actually make it something that's created by um, a unit. Yeah. Well, I know more, you know, is that no more apparent than in duo play? I think it's like, you're totally aware if you're really in that show, if it's really, you know, shared between the two of you and, and also, you know, you're aware of whether or not you kind of made that meaning or you allowed that meaning to be found really letting the audience figure out for themselves what's going on and helping them along the way with that. I mean, that kind of, uh, that kind of emergent play, I, I just think is, is really awesome to watch and awesome to be a part of. I feel like I'm just as much a part of it watching it from the audience as you guys are playing it, you know? And I'm super excited to have you at Tampa because I don't think anybody in here has seen anything like that. Kind of the art of getting out of your own way is kind of what it sounds like your mentality is. That's a really uh, slick way to put it. I think that's absolutely it. That's a great way of putting it. And we, yeah. and we, as Justin said, we've been really working on trying to do that. And that's certainly what I got when I watched you guys in Philly. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it again. Well, we're super stoked to come down to Tampa and uh, teach and perform and uh, just meet all the other people that are going to be there. It's going to be a blast for three days. We're going to have a, a solid group of people to work with. Great. That's great. And we really can't wait to get down there and uh, have some fun. Yeah. Cool. Cool. It was great talking to you. Yeah, you too. Thanks so much.